So, now that a couple weeks have gone by after Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc 5's finale, I can honestly say that the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime community seems like a big clusterfuck. Everyone is trying to figure out what really worked about the show, what didn't work about the show. Is it really good? Is it really bad? Who is the best waifu? Who is the best... boy... Foo, hub, foo, I, I don't care. Anyways, we here today are to talk about the five things Arc 5 definitely did wrong, keeping in mind all this is subjective and there's no actual definites. Now, before we go any further, I do want to make something clear. I did enjoy much more of Arc 5 than I was disappointed with, so next week, or next time, or at some point, we are going to talk about the top five things Arc 5 did right. Again, all this is completely subjective, there's no real right or wrong. But without further ado, let's get started. So I know not a lot of people um, harp too much on Yu-Gi-Oh! animation. It's a long-running shounen, what do you expect? We well, you know what? No. I hold Yu-Gi-Oh!'s animation to a pretty high regard, because there are a lot of beautiful moments throughout Arc 5. Some visually gorgeous scenes with great color coordination, good use of action, and some great emotion too. However, there are also a lot of moments that is clearly just someone standing in front of a blue sky background with stock movement being used. This is clearly a result of bad budget, probably due to the show's production troubles we're learning a lot that it had. And to be perfectly honest, I wouldn't have asked as bad a problem with it if those just good moments weren't so good but these bad moments seem to just when they go on they go on too much and none of this is more clear than in the use of CGI I'm not against CGI in anime as look budgets again need to be controlled but in the other Yu-Gi-Oh's that tried using CG namely 5D's and Zale they use them on monsters with fairly simplistic concept designs that's why in Zale a lot of people said Utopia was just a Gundam it was so that way you could make the 2D to 3D turn transition just fine. However, and another problem with Arc 5 is the card designs. It often felt like many of the monsters just were overly cluttered and overly crowded, like they just threw one random element onto another. So because of this, the CG isn't really focused or clean, so movement looks stilted, and sometimes they just look like a huge mess. There's also a lot of issues of because this time around characters ride their monsters, there's a lot of moments where they don't feel like they interact with them, and you never really feel the weight of a monster being summoned because again they don't really mesh but not everyone felt this way and there are some cool summons and all that stuff so that's why this is at the bottom of the list too many characters doesn't always have to be a problem large cast animes like do Ra 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 or my hero academia are beloved for some good reasons however in Yu Gi Oh arc 5 too many characters is a huge problem Part of this is that they want everyone to seem deep and well-developed as opposed to leaving some characters to be simplistic, but instead of this just making everyone feel deep and well-developed, it just feels like everyone's just climbing over top of each other for screen time. Like, say, characters like Gogenzaka or Sawatori. They didn't really have big character arcs even though they were in a lot of the show because any time you could have gave to them had to give time to giving say let's say Yugo time or Dennis time or XC's dimension people time or synchro dimension time or fusion dimension time because there were so many characters the show really couldn't give anyone the time they deserved now there are standout characters who we'll talk about next week but for the most part it just felt like you had a bunch of people just being thrown in and out at the show's convenience just so you could find more time to throw more people in and out. Saying a Yu-Gi-Oh! series is convoluted is in and of itself a pretty dumb statement. Yu-Gi-Oh! is a show about card games running the world. So why is this the one where everyone seems to be saying this was dumb? Well, in all due reality, it's because the plot has way too much going on and it doesn't really pace any of it outright. Um, you constantly have it where story arcs will be dragged out where we learn nothing and then we just get everything as a big exposition dump. I feel like a lot of this is the plot that is done in this show is so over the top it just goes past what your suspension of disbelief will allow. What I mean by that is, throughout the Yu-Gi-Oh! history, we have to accept that card games are a better weapon than, say, machine guns. But you are okay with this because we have moments where we see big destruction via the cards. You have a lot of scenes where people die via card games. I buy it enough. 
What I don't buy in this show is that Zark can make the dimensions explode because he wants to be the strongest duelist and entertain people, and then Ray gets split into four girls, and then these kids get raised together for some reason and fall in love with each other and all this. The plot never really comes together in a way that really makes sense. Part of this is also the fact that the show's moral idea it's trying to get across never really gets utilized as well. The show wants to be about how smiling and making people happy brings people together. It never really uses this for anything because it's just treated as its own separate entity, which leads us into our second biggest problem. I've been saying this for three years, and it's time to finally just outright say it. Yuya is the worst protagonist of any of them. His arc is almost non-existent, as I don't feel he is that much better at the end than the beginning. Um, he has little to no personality, and what there is isn't that likable. And I think Mega Capital G stated it best. His whole idea and moral center, he just tries to force it on people. Yuya is obnoxious and annoying. I know there are a lot of Yuya fans, but I felt like his story arc never really grabbed me or was that interesting. There are great emotional moments with this character, but I placed them more on the actor and the moments when the animation was good. It wasn't because the character was super likable or super intriguing, it's just because everything else worked. I felt as though Yuya never really was the driving force of his own story, which doesn't have to be a problem. Again, Do Ra 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 has several major plots going on, and the main characters is just one of them. But Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc 5 tries so hard to get you to like Yuya. They throw him in so much, and they just make him the center of everything when it doesn't make sense. And I feel like a lot of that is a lack of belief that the audience will buy this character. And, well, they were right, because as far as I can tell, most people don't like Yuya, and would rather the show have just been straight up about Yuzu, or Yugo, or anybody. And I hope that this problem doesn't continue because I don't want to sit through this guy again. The number one problem with Arc 5, in my opinion, leads to every other problem in the show. None of these other things would have happened if it wasn't for this one originating factor, which makes you wonder, why didn't I just do a video where I talked about this? But this was a better idea. I, I don't know why. Probably just clickbait. Anyways, the number one problem with Arc 5 is a lack of stable direction. The animation probably could have been more stable throughout if you had a director who was more mindful of that. The characters, you probably could have cut some or repurposed some if you had a character who knew had a director who knew how to do that. The plot could have been better shown to us if you had the right director. And Yuya could have been a much better character if you had a director. I'm not one of these people who feels that a show or a movie is just the director's ship, but in this show's case, it really does show people why there needs to be a stable director. Arc 5 goes off into so many different directions and has so many dips in quality that it's very clear that its production problems were never resolved and no one ever took the helm. There's a lot of reports coming out of Konami that there's no one really running the ship, and this series kind of exemplified that. There didn't really seem to be a stable sense of direction, so all the good moments in it just sort of are there and their own little thing and don't overly play into anything. I feel like if the show really wanted to succeed, you needed a strong presence involved, like, say, again, Urobuchi, or the guy who did Evangelion, or the guy who does Attack on Titan. Just someone who could keep a consistent tone throughout. Hell, even Sword Art Online has better direction than this. At least that was something. Okay, it was a cheap, cliche teen drama, but it was something. Arc 5 is an all-over-the-place convoluted mess. And I think that shows throughout, and I think we all kind of know it, even if, again, there is a lot to love in Arc 5, and we'll talk about that next time, but above all else, I think Arc 5 has a ton of problems, it results in a mess, but, you now what do you think? In the comment section below, give me your thoughts on any of the points I made, if there's anything you think I missed, um, if you have some other problems, or what you would have done to fix anything, put up or shut up. And as always, click to like, and click subscribe, and join me next time to talk about what this show did right.